Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Shadow Empire in our Dune series, episode number two. Alright, so we almost almost are done with this turn. I'm just going to send this militia out this way. And if I'm not mistaken, we're going to get one more movement point and then we can actually move back into this hex. Um, the reason I'm going to do this, oh, we can actually... <clears throat> we could even do that. I, I want to do this and move him back because my ultimate destination for this militia unit is actually back over to the east. So do this and then move back because we already have somebody covering this side of things. Uh, and it looks like we can even get over to a new city, which I'm, oh my gosh, what is this? Refugee camp, which will give us plus 200 population per turn. And we've already found a, another major, <clears throat> the Robespierre. Wow, fascinating, fascinating game so far. Already we've encountered two majors. And we have this other unit that was <laughs> out in the out in the boonies. Let me take a look at the report and we can actually figure out how many five majors. So we've already encountered Montagnac and Bernador. Okay. Robespierre is just part of Bernador. So yeah, obviously we're probably not going to get this because we don't have the movement points available. Um, I'm pretty sure that Robespierre is just going to expand one hex to the south. We'll have We'll have set up our borders there. <clears throat> Looks like they actually have access to military research points as well. If I look over here, this was military research, was it not? It was. Same same thing. Okay, good. Um, this is Atenio. So we don't we don't actually know where Atenio is, and honestly, okay. And by the way, I finally um, am, I have this memorized now. The high high zone, the high ground is inside the hex and the low ground is <clears throat> um, these little where these if the drawing is on the inside of the hex that's the high ground and uh, you can kind of see the shadow below it I, I suppose this is supposed to be shadow although maybe not I don't know yeah I, I guess it is supposed to be but you can see there there's a white line <gasps> oh my gosh you can actually see it Wait, no, there's a white line at the top of all of them. Okay, that's just 3D effects. Never mind. Got excited there for a moment. Anyway, we don't have that much to do on this turn, except for we need to construct our first building. And right now, our food supply is not looking good. We have two, two ways we can go about this. We need an agricultural dome for the actual food. But once we get that, we're going to need water so that we can actually provide food. So the question is, do we want to have water and then get food, in which case we'll have to buy food from the market. Food. Or do we want to get food first and buy water? Water is cheaper right now, and we do have a reserve of it that we will be able to use. So my my thoughts on this are buy the food first, and then we can always buy water. In fact, we probably should just spend almost our entire money, I mean basically our entire money, on buying a lot of water right now when it's so cheap. <laughs> Why water is so cheap on, on Dune, on Arrakis, I'll never know, but this is this has got to be an all-time low for it. So we probably should just blow our entire budget picking up water, and then that, that means that we're still going to build this. We can't build it in this hex because there's already a dome farm here. I'm pretty sure. Let me just double check that, confirm. Yeah, already one type of this asset in the hex, so we'll construct it here. And yeah, we'll just start constructing this, which means it's only going to take 100 of our industrial points, which is fantastic, which means we're probably going to be able to quickly get started on this. So after two turns, I guess it'll take two turns, but it, we should build this at 100% rate, I mean, no slowdown, and then very quickly transition to the water uh, right away. Yeah, and, and because I'm feeling pretty confident about this, yeah, we are going to buy the water, all of it that we can, for 136 credits. Copy that. Money well spent, in my opinion, that'll give us a few turns before we actually run out of water. If every if the stars align and if everything works out correctly, I think our storage, what, is yeah, 2200, so we are not over storage. We have plenty of storage even available if we choose to. Um, so this is going to get started. It's going to get our the, the economy stabilized so right now we're obviously not in a good situation in fact i probably have to go over and buy food before we start running out this is already pretty expensive 
So we can buy 586 food with our current 176 credits. If we're losing 188 a turn. I don't. I feel like that's too much. I feel like we're not going to lose that much all the time. Um, let's say we're losing 100 a turn. Well, let's say, okay, well, for the moment, let's just pretend that we have two turns of food left. And then we are going to just buy for how much we need to feed people. Okay, so two turns, and this will, that other thing will come on, it'll come in in three turns. The food production will come in in three turns. So we need to buy enough, we just need to buy 200 food actually, if my calculations are correct. So we can get 200 food for 60, I think this is not correct by the way, 201 even will cost 61 credits because it doesn't, I think it rounds up. Um, so we'll get two, we'll get 200 food. Copy that. 60 credits, which means we actually still have <laughs> a few pennies rolling around in the, in the treasury. Not much, excuse me, but it's enough I think to get us by for now. Uh, if we have any other trade shortages, I mean one of the things I'd like to buy generally is machines, machine parts. They're extremely cheap right now. We could get three, but I am, I'm gonna wait. Uh, just in case something else urgent comes up, who knows, we may in a few turns need food or water. And one of the best reasons, one of the reasons why I'd like to buy all this stuff now before we get close to critical is this will give us a little bit of time or give the merchants really a little bit of time for their prices to, they're gonna spike next turn because we just bought a lot, which means that, you know, to me, essentially I think when you buy a lot, the, they're gonna, have less to offer, so less supply equals higher price. Um, and even just a reaction to the market, if people are buying, since we bought last turn, then hey, we should sell higher. <laughs> that means that prices aren't high enough, right? Anyway, we'll end the turn here, and I will from now on be just pausing briefly during the uh, AI turn, and I'll go back in the history if anything interesting happens. All right, here we are back, round three. Nothing really to do this turn except for move our units. No decisions. And uh, just a bunch of reports. No contact with the enemy. We've discovered new tech barracks. We've gotten 219 units of fuel. We'll probably end up selling that, frankly. Oh, okay. And then 400 Galactic Republic grade infantry. <clears throat> well, that's pretty nice. We are expanding. Um, we control 74. That's great. One or more units has logistical problems. Okay, it'll be interesting to see which one does. Uh, low treasury, well, <laughs> okay. Can't do much about that. Metal is a key resource. Um, yeah, so we have, uh, do we have mines nearby? Or sorry, um, ruins nearby? We kind of do. Okay, so um, let's just go over here, steal this hex. This is basically just stealing it. <laughs> it's not, it shouldn't be ours. I'm just gonna take that. They can keep proceeding by if they want, but my next goal is actually... Is this the one, by the way, that didn't get supply last turn? So what I was looking for was used. Yeah, this one, no problems there. I kind of want to push the supply a little bit further. Oh, never mind. Um, all hands on deck. Let's push back this way, because yes, we have somebody coming in, Costello. I don't have a good... Uh, experience with Costello because in a previous gameplay, <laughs> Costello was the name of a very belligerent. What the heck? Yeah, 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 this is fine. Um, Costello was the name of a very belligerent miner that I. I think they were slavers or something. They were just horrible people to deal with. Anyways, if we move here, they won't be able to cut off our line of supply without directly moving on top of it. So I think I will do that. 60. I think we can move like this and then like that, and it is true. Very good. So we have zone of control on these two. They can't occupy it just by moving forward. Um, they did not take it. Okay, we will take it. <laughs> In fact, I'll even move over here to push the borders a little bit further, and then we're just going to beeline right back. We have other places to go, other people to see. Um, okay. <clears throat> so how do we want to deal with this? We need to get around this unit and nobody's going to be able to do that this turn. In fact, you're going to stay right where you are because it's, not, it's really not ideal for us to be moving this unit further off the roads. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, normally I would be ecstatic about having these mobile units, but 
they're quite out of place in the dunes. Um, somebody commented that we have the Fremen. Um, by the way, that also someone else commented that we have. In fact, I'll, I'll look it up real fast. What was it? It was the uh, Fedikin. Fedikin, right? So this is Vorm Vormithrax, which some of you who are watching this series may already be familiar with. He's doing Shadow Empires, another content creator. So he mentioned that the Fedikin is the elite, uh, elite Fremen unit trained by the Muad'Dib. That's what I was referring to when I was trying to think about the Sardukai's uh, counterpart. So we'll probably push... I think that the Galactic Republic Infantry will push up in the most vulnerable position. Have one of these guys go this way. And then it's just a question about... So if we are cut off here, if, if this unit does move here... No, I'm actually going to say no, we don't want to do that. Because what I was thinking is it wouldn't matter since... Um, yeah, it won't matter since this unit, the militia, can actually get supply this way. But in fact, he'll be moving closer to the city, and that is not a good thing. If he moves here, he's two hexes away. If he moves here, he's still three hexes away. So that doesn't matter as much. We're in a good position to destroy him next turn, but it looks like the only thing we're going to be able to do this turn is... I'm going to move up and just bombard him. And we can do it with... I think we'll do it with these two units, both of them, and the reason why I'm doing both, the ones down here, is if we just happen to get an amazing, amazing... We might actually end up attacking them if we get some amazing damage done, if their readiness is like down to zero, or that we just kill a bunch of troops. We may still risk it even though we finally pin them in and then we won't be able to, so... I don't know, let's just weigh it based on the results, but... Uh, the... Oh wow, so good results already. I was hoping for more kills, but that's fine. <laughs> Nearly every unit was was pushed back or killed. So there, I think this is a legitimate report that they're down to eleven readiness. The morale's down. It's very tempting, isn't it? Another thing which could have happened, which didn't, but could have, is if they were so weak, we might have been able to just exert our zone of control on here because they have no zone of control left. Really, that didn't happen, unfortunately. So only one unit is left to attack. Ah, I see. And it's still 16 to 1 odds, which is, you know, obviously really in our favor. <clears throat> but it won't completely eliminate them, so we'll wait. We will wait. Now, who is the one who was out of... I wonder who was the one that was out of... Oh, it was you. You were out. Oh, yeah, because we don't have a supply station, so we just ran out of logistics heading that way. Okay, well, we, I haven't managed logistics yet, but at least... Thanks to Das Tactic, I have a better understanding of how to do that. So we don't need to do anything with it right now, but um, we eventually are going to have to do logistical management. And I've seen, I think, uh, what's his name, Battle Mode from the 4X podcast, or not, I mean, he's from the Explorminate site. He showed me recently a screenshot of a little, like a late game war he's in, and I'm just, I'm salivating over getting to that point and then having logistics play a role. Let's hope that the AI, at that by that point, there'll be some patches and stuff by the time I get there, I think. Let's hope that the AI, by that point, has to fight with logistics fairly. That they have to build roads themselves, or at least, you know, they have to deal with logistical bottlenecks and all that. So I think that's all we need to do for this turn, because our assets are under construction. I hope moving at 100%, they are. Next turn, this will be done. It won't give us food. Oh man, minus 283. Oh boy, that's worse than I thought. Uh, well, it's it's worth paying, it's taking a look at the situation for the traders. We could sell a little bit of metal. In fact, we're not looking like we're in very good... I think um, some of the metal was already pre-allocated for construction. Industrial points is looking good. Um, fuel is probably what we're going to end up selling. We re recovered that, and I mentioned this already when we when we recovered it. Uh, water, no, we don't want to sell that because <laughs> we're going to need it for the food production. Yeah, so we could buy food, but it's now up to 0.43. I think that we're, it's worth, well, shoot, that's really not that bad. How much can we get? We can get quite a lot of it still. We can basically buy ourselves an extra turn. So I think that we have to, in fact, do this because 
I'm gonna leave. Uh, uh, let me just buy 200 food for 86 credits. Let's hope that that pushes us, makes it just one extra turn. Hopefully, gets us over the hump. This is like an insane amount of food that we're eating. I don't. I, I can't justify why that's the case right now, or I can't rectify that. But that is what it is. So good. Anyways, we've stolen some good assets from the surrounding majors. That's important. We'll want expansion to the north as quickly as possible uh, to get these ruins. I think those are unfortunately our closest ruins. Is that that can't possibly be correct? I hope. Yeah, it looks like it is. So that's actually a matter of real importance. We have. I mean, we're gonna have to prospect to find some kind of metal, but. <laughs> Yeah, metal's gonna be a big issue, I think. So, uh, well, okay, we'll get to that in the next turn. So I'll end the turn. Nothing else, right? Yeah, I think I'll end the turn. Okay, round four. We have one decision to make. I, I was trying to pace myself or calm myself a little bit, uh, you know, in the turn resolution period. So, oh, wow, gain technology fascination. That's great. That's going to increase our research rate or basically give us bonus points to research. Uh, what I mean by this pacing comment is just this is a game which is extremely, it, it is extremely detailed and it requires a lot of patience, basically, to look at all the different reports and all that. So I think what I'll do is at the beginning of every turn, when I come in, I'm going to pause and kind of um, I'll, I'll be sure to come back and talk about the things that I think are interesting. However, ooh, military advisors requested. This is interesting. They'll pay us money. That's so important. We could really use the money. Looks like food is leveling off a little bit. But anyways, what I said, it, what I wanted to say is I'll probably come into these things and then immediately take a break. Basically, immediately just cut and say, okay, I need to spend some time looking at what what we actually want to do here. Um, which I think is <laughs> it's the best way to go about it. Oh, this is fantastic. The agricultural dome is complete, and we are really in a bad way as far as metal goes. If I look, metal is improving at 45 a turn, and I think we are going to need... Wow, I don't have to think. 250 metal, that is... That's brutal. Yeah, that is not good. So I think what I'll do here is, let me just cut away for a little bit and look at all the options. First of all, first and foremost, very easy for us this turn. We complete the encirclement, maybe even with this unit. And you know what, shoot. I might want to move with this one. I'll take 50. Oh, wait, 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 this is sand, sand dunes, sand dunes. Okay, so the sand, plain sand is not as bad as sand dunes. And we, of course, are stuck in the sand dunes. <laughs> I, I actually, I mean, I'm, I'm used to seeing the plains rocky, but I, I don't think I've noticed before this. I'm pretty sure I have not observed that there's a difference between the plain sand and the sand dunes. Um, I hope you realize, everyone should realize, though, uh, that this is going to be absolutely hell to get any railroads into or out of. It's a construction cost, I think, of about a thousand to build railroads through dunes, sand dunes. So industrial points are gonna be critical to us getting any kind of uh, railroads going on. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to deal with paved roads and trucks. Really interesting scenario. Um, and not that we can't use railroads in other cities, but I cannot see how we'll be using railroads for like the first 50 turns. It's just, it's so prohibitive on industrial points. We're gonna have to have like a heavy factory by that point. So anyways, let me look around and then come back and see what's up. Okay, well, we have a lot of interesting things to go through. I, I wanna actually spend a little bit of time, at least in this first, uh, well, this is the second episode, but uh, the first, in the beginning, I should just say, to go through a lot of the reports and interesting things, uh, I went through everything just to make sure, I mean, I've been through all these things before, but just wanted to see what might be interesting for us to talk about here. Uh, not a whole lot. Interestingly enough, a lot of the things I want to cover here are best covered in uh, the management screen. 
no demands really. I don't know. There's not much interesting to say here. I guess the victory screen really told us everything. The trade report was kind of interesting to see who's buying what. Costello buying rare earth metals. I don't know why. Or maybe this is not that Costello's buying them, but our trader is just trading items over to the Costello Republic trader. Who knows? Um, so first and foremost then, was there any organizational news? Yeah, I was just monitoring um, how the research is going. So it looks like Mm, we'll be done. We're getting. We're at 28, and we're getting 14 points. Oh, okay, 14 people at all. We have gained 28 research points. So that means that this should be done in three more turns, if I'm doing that correctly. Um, an interesting thing I didn't know until this, until this turn. So every other previous video I've ever made on Shadow Empire has been without this full knowledge. Bonus points scale with the square root. So 100 bonus points is 10%, and uh, 400 bonus points is 20%. So very simple. I like the math there. So let's go over to the management screen where we do have a lot to cover because we still want to cover more things than just this <laughs> in the, uh, in the in this episode. So I was looking at the assets, and our, our agricultural dome did finish this turn. So this turn... Um, we are going to consume 61. I, I, there's some food that's just going to the people, but so we'll be left with 122 in stock. And it, it looks scary, right? It looks like we might have a problem. But if we preview, because this thing is now going to kick in, it's supposed to, or predicted at least, to provide us 224 food, which means that we'll actually have enough to have a stockpile increase by next turn, which is really, really good news. Um, now, water consumption is going to be 200, and we have no you know, counteraction for that. There's nothing to produce water yet. It's obviously the next thing we're gonna do, but we don't wanna do it quite yet because uh, we don't have the metal saved up for it. So 250 metal, it's just gonna be, unfortunately, it's gonna be a real slog to try to get to that. Metal's increasing at 45 a turn. We have 122. So in two turns, I think we can start. And then by, I think, it, so it's gonna be 300. No, I guess in three turns we have to start. So we should be, we should have just enough water to get us through the, the time until we have a water source and then oh we can sit back relax and you know we're, we're, we should be good for a while the main thing i actually wanted to show here um by the way models if you go to the designs yeah we can actually see we haven't built any of these yet but when we build our main army here are the hit points and soft attack hard attack uh, these soldiers don't look particularly good but they don't look horrible. I mean, 2040 is what I'm used to seeing, so I think we rolled a little bit unlucky on the infantry, and 2100 is what I'm used to No, no, 2080. Yeah, it's 2080, which is normal for the machine gun, I believe. So we rolled a little bit unlucky on the soldiers, a little bit lucky on the war ones, and the machine guns, and as far as hit point goes, I don't know what their normal hit points are. These are done with the technology... Yeah, personal armor. So we can... We can probably improve some of these things um, anyway, when it comes down to that, but for now, the leader screen. This I've never really looked at, and it's actually extremely, I, I think it only starts with relation check, but I was ch checking and unchecking all these. The most important thing, in my opinion, is this natural relation point, which tells you where, um, what the person's relations are going to eventually settle to. And the good news is our first SHQ, he does like us. so. The, uh, and he's also very, very capable. Those are two great things that he has a high natural relationship point. Excuse me. I'm hitting everything on my desk. Uh, but on top of the relation point, he also has a high capability. So that's really good. And economic council. Oh my gosh, the suitability. The suitability of this. He was at zero. He's already at 11. So things are just phew, looking great. And that's probably what I could have shown you from the report screen is if I go to cabinet, yeah, so suitability of 11 already, and our first SHQ, we gotta keep this guy happy because his suitability is 71, which is fantastic. Um, we attach this one to our governor. Governor, I think, actually has one of our lower resting points. So so that's all the report screen. Um, let's get to the, the action, which is move this guy in. I'm gonna do bombardment with just my, just this unit. Um, he already has a 50, Two to one, which is wait, yeah, bombardment here, range attack, attack. Fire. Should 
should be over relatively quickly and looks like causing death and destruction everywhere as expected two kills so far i mean this is great the less damage they do the better right um yeah readiness of down to 10 two kills we should be in really good shape just to eliminate this unit now and we've surrounded him uh, I'm not going to attack with this unit, and maybe I won't even attack with... Okay, 30 to 1 might already be good enough. What if I... Let's look. Who do I want to move? We can already have the Galactic Republic unit move in. So I think I'm going to attack with just these two units. 48 to 1 should give me everything I need. This guy can start moving down that road. Oh, yeah, this is great. This is very good. Engaging enemy. Just want to don't we don't want to see too many kills. Okay, there's one. We can suffer through one. So two kills. Okay, we lost 200, 100 RPGs, 100 rifles. Casualties are they're just part of the war, right? So I guess we will move this guy back so he's closer to supply. And this one's actually going to move forward. And is that's pretty much as far forward as I want to move that direction. We probably should actually move him back down so that um, he's a little bit there's might be <laughs> on a wing and a prayer that he'll be in supply next turn I'm almost positive that won't be the case yeah, and this guy can get back I wonder why if I move so move here why does it only take 15 oh because I'd have to move into the dunes to go south but I actually move on to the ruins to go this way okay makes sense so yeah, then we'll move here and then there and start pushing that direction. And that should remove the um, small amount of unrest that we have over here. The danger, I should say. So we have danger right now. Um, I could move this unit. I could move them off-road, but... You know, actually, phew, we can get this one to move all the way down here. That's something I didn't really consider. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't... It's going to be so tough because these units are... The mobile units are kind of useless. <laughs> I guess we'll do it. I mean, there's nothing else for him to do. What we might end up doing... Oh, yeah, actually, we need to... We're going we're gonna to race down here to cut off the expansion of... What's your name again? Montanac? So Montanac is apparently sending somebody on a beeline mission up to the east. And they're probably getting a free road to go along with them because I think the AI still gets free roads. So we'll... We'll do our best to cut them off. Head them off at the pass. Hopefully their logistics is actually being just cut off because of distance. Um, if that's their main city here. And even if they have a road, it should after nine hexes it should have no more logistics carrying capability. So hopefully that's the case. Uh, in the meantime, what's the best way of dealing with this? I think be, to be aggressive. I think moving here and then moving this unit I know he'd rather move here. Okay, let's let's just do it. Let's move here. Maybe even move here. Um, usually the, the units, when you kind of push them like this, they will move back to cover their line of supply. If they move forward, they're going to cut us off the road, but then we'll just cut them off and, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll cut each other off, but I think that they'll be in worse shape for that because we can just, we can propose peace whenever we want. It's one of our stratagems to propose peace. And we're not at war with them right now, so that will solidify the borders. I'm pretty sure. So again, this is, this is I think this is looking really good for us. Um, a little bit of issue here. I, if I had just one more fate point, I would definitely be using our gladiators card to get us some quality of life entertainment in the city. We don't have that, and this increases unrest, which is not something I want to do. So we'll leave things as is. As for this, I'm going to say yes. I know that unfortunately it's going to hurt our first SHQ, which I'd prefer not to, but uh, um, I, I, yeah. So his resting point before was, yeah, so now it's down to 79 with that decision. And I think that might be partly because of my decision right there, because yeah, I think it was at 80 before. So it looks like those things do have an effect. Uh, uh, Maybe the relation moves to the natural relation point, but the relation point, the natural relation point also slowly moves towards the relation. That would make a lot of sense as well. Okay, anyway, um, let's end this turn. As long as I'm not forgetting anything. Well, we did get a little bit of money. Is there anything else we need to do? We, I don't think we have to do anything, though. One of the considerations would be to buy machine parts where they're really, really cheap. <laughs> 
But with 300 credit squeeze, it's not like we have a whole lot of money to spend. I could see myself getting... We have seven right now? And how many are... Yeah, we're done building everything. Oh, what I could do is buy metal. Metal's 1.5, that's not cheap. But that would allow us to build... I mean, actually, that saves us from having to buy water. And this is metal that we're... Like, the water is a renewable resource, right? So when we're buying it, we should be generating it per turn anyway. That said, okay, yeah, we have 60... We have more than enough water here once we get down to it. So I think that sells me on the idea of just buying metal right now, even though it's very expensive to do that. Maybe just 100 metal, which should get us by... Will it? If we buy 100 metal, we will have 177, which is still 100, <laughs> 123 short, which is three turns of metal short. Okay, I'm gonna just roll the dice on this. Let's see what the credit, the credit is 1.54 right now. I'm gonna roll the dice that hopefully the cost of metal goes down next turn. This is totally a gamble. It could get worse, but I'm just hoping since we're not buying it, our metal's gonna go up. Mm, I don't know, just call it intuition, or a, not even strong intuition, just pretty much a guess that it's going to go down. 1.54, but we're, we're really playing stock market right here, and that's not... <laughs> uh, I'm, not sure that, I'm not sure that's the wisest idea. Let's see how it works out, though. So I think everyone else has moved. I think 9 is to cycle through units. Oh, yeah, I forgot about you. And we're actually getting, we're getting close to getting this guy. Okay. Next turn, we might have to send off somebody on a suicide mission just to connect with our militia here. I forgot to move him. Okay, good now. So eight and nine move backwards and forward through your units and zero turns on guard mode, which means don't activate this unit. You can see a little G. Don't activate this unit in the cycle of units for this turn. Yeah, so, okay, I think we'll just roll the dice and hit the next turn. Um. Let's just say I was wrong about that unit that we were very close to, um, just south southeast of our base, our home. Okay, got 255 credits, it's wonderful. So you're going to notice something. <laughs> He's actually completely cut off. He, he cut himself off, but... Oh, man. Oh, it looks like they were beelining for this, which is... Oh, it's industrial points, which I, I'm i actually thinking it might be worth declaring war on them just to get that. So let me move back this way and, you know, start to come back into supply. How do we want to deal with this? Let's give him space to move back if he so chooses. Um, okay, let's get this unit before I forget. He's got to keep moving. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that that did not end up being an attack. Okay, holy cow. We linked! We linked! But, you know, obviously we're in desperate, dire, dire situation here. That this unit is probably already starting to lose. Yeah. His readiness is depleting. He's probably already taking casualties in terms of uh, soldiers. So he has three and 100. Oh, let's, first, before I forget, the main thing is, let's see, 1.54, 1.58. Okay, so we gambled and we lost. It wasn't... This is like the best way to lose by like pennies. Very, very, very little change. And we actually got enough money um, this turn, I think, to do a full purchase. So with the, with the amount, we can probably just buy 200 metal directly. And that's a lot of metal. Um, but again, metal, you can stockpile infinite amount of metal. There's no limit on the amount of metal you can stockpile. So it's never a bad thing to buy metal. It's not like you're ever gonna need to sell it later in the future. Um, it doesn't expire and it doesn't run out of storage space. So there are good reasons to buy it. Um, so we'll do this, and then that'll give us the metal we need. I think I'll just do 200. Let's do this. And our SHQ guy, he's still coming through. it. Look at how amazing this... I mean, we know that his suitability is almost... It's like 80% or 70%, something really, really high. What's more is he saved us 53 credits on that price. So it's really significant. So the first SHQ, really important. In fact, if I have any stratagems to help... Um, this will help with leader's next skill roll. I may end up using that against, or not against, but with my first SHQ. But, yeah. 
Don't need that. Crew Junior, no. Yeah, I don't think any of these are necessary yet. And then there's the Miner situation. So if the Miner, if we can push him out of this little corridor here. If he's even over here, I don't mind declaring official end of border. And then hope that we weren't going to discover metal over here. <laughs> hope, but you know, you never know. Um, now, where do I want the rest of my military units to go? I mean, these the guard units are just in so much. They're so powerful. I think I'm going to start sending them this way. And he can only get two hexes if he just goes like this. But I think it might be worth... Okay, we can do this, which will give us a lot more um, space. We're, you know, just trying to push our forces as far in every direction. And we can probably start working on this guy with bombardment. I'll push there, but then I'll, I'll push back. So there's a unit probably... Oh, where is there a unit? My goodness. So why didn't... We moved up here, but we didn't get zone of control here. So does that mean there's a unit right here? I'm not exactly sure. And that guy's just going to try to come back. Hopefully that we aren't attacked here. Hey, we were the, still the first to cover. This is a... Yeah, it's a town. So Hayden might give us some kind of benefit. Um, yeah, that's that's actually where we want you to be. Everyone's where we want them to to be, I believe. So that's the units. We'll do their our nine cycle through. Nope, only have the the SHQ itself. Okay, so trade is done. Now the next order of business, I guess, is just to start constructing our ice mining facility. Okay. Oh, it's only two hundred fifty. I might have I so I overbought on metal, but again, it's not a waste. So. That should hopefully take two turns. If I've done my math right, it'll take two turns. Um, and then the next thing we need to work on is getting a truck station up, or probably if we can get the money for it, 500, we'll buy the transport hub here. And then, yeah, that's gonna be brutal. Hmm. Yeah, we'll probably buy that and then we'll probably install a uh, supply station. Five hex or four hexes away, excuse me, one, two. I mean, it could be anywhere. It could be right here. But, yeah, it'd be interesting. But I'm going to call this episode to a close here. Um, no, let's first do our decisions. Policy speech, we can ask, you know, our goal is to get our civilization. Well, this gives us heart. That's a good goal, but I don't want that. I do like industry levels, but how many turns do we have? I don't know. War with Castello Republic, that's a real possibility. Okay, between these three, the goal, the, the choice is obvious. I want enforcement. So I'll do that. And I do want industrial. <laughs> I just, I'm not sure I can get it that quickly. Uh, request to help control traders. Interesting. So we really don't want to piss off either of these guys, unfortunately. An envoy from Bernador has explained to us that there is a group of traders present in both our and their shire that is that it is decreasing their populist enthusiasm for war by selling a wide array of pleasure and entertainment products. They would like us to crack down on these traders together. So this is minus autocracy and plus commerce. I know that we really want our direct economic director to be positive towards us, but honestly, this is the better in every way. So we'll say no refuse. Commerce is great. And uh, we don't want autocracy as well. So for all those reasons, we'll do that. And now I think we're good to conclude the episode. So. Um, thanks for watching this one. I'm now back responding to comments. I've been seeing a lot of the first episodes already gone live, and it's been fun to interact with people there. Um, people pointed out, for example, or someone pointed out that our Atreides is actually green and black. <laughs> so I got the colors wrong, but these are nice colors anyway. I would have chosen green naturally because that's kind of the main theme color of my channel. Um, so it's it's a color that I'm, you know enthusiastic to use anyway but well that's fine we'll let it go blue and yellow so that's fine uh, but and i've been reading all the other comments so it's it's been fun but until the next episode thanks for watching and take care <laughs>